Hi there, my name is Adam O, oh, and I am the president and founder of Midwest Guild of Fine Art. And one of the most requested commissions that I get from clients is uh, to draw their pets. So I thought today it would be a, a cool idea to show you how I do a dog in charcoal. Um, let's go through a, a kind of a brief list of the equipment that I'm using. You don't have to use these, uh, that's just what I'm comfortable using. So for the paper, I use uh, Strathmore 18 inch by 24 inch paper. It's their 400 series, which is a medium weight paper, and it just seems to take the charcoal fine without uh, adding too much paper generated texture, if that makes sense. Uh, I can control the texture more on this paper. I also will use uh, two pencils. Uh, both of them are made by Generals. Uh, one is hard, the other is extra soft. I use a 2.3 millimeter Tombow eraser, a kneaded eraser, a handful of Q-tips, a blending stump, uh, a paper towel, and just a couple pieces of extra printer paper. And I'll show you how I use those here in a minute. Those are actually more important than what you might think. Uh, before we dive into the actual drawing itself, you need to pull up your reference photo uh, I'm using this one that I converted from color to black and white, which helps me uh, kind of define the black and white areas and to know how the gradients kind of blend into each other, which is harder to do if you're just converting from color to black and white in your head. So once I've stripped the color out of the reference photo, I first kind of quickly look and see what are the brightest whites and what are the darkest blacks in the drawing. So you'll notice that the middle of this dog's forehead is, the, her fur is white, but it's not the whitest white on the drawing. The whitest white is actually the glints of light that are backlighting her head along the edges of the ears, the tops of the head, um, the sides of the fur. Knowing how bright white that is, is going to define how uh, gray your actual whites are in the drawing if that makes sense so in other words the white in the middle of her head is not actually white it's more of a mid-tone gray but by comparing that to the darker areas of the drawing it will create the illusion of white fur so I have to know that before I even start out I know that the brightest whites in that drawing are going to be negative space meaning uh, it's just going to be clear white paper with no pencil marks on it and I need to know that going into the drawing so that I know how to adjust my other grays and uh, to mid-tones to make that happen and look natural. So this isn't a long process it's just looking at the drawing defining those areas keeping them in your mind and then uh, we dive right into the drawing once we have that located. So the very first thing that I do whenever I start on a drawing is something your art teacher probably wouldn't recommend. Uh, since I'm right-handed, I would normally start drawing from the top left of the drawing and work my way to the bottom right. And that's to prevent my hand from smudging charcoal that's already on the paper and to prevent oils from my hand from getting on to charcoal. But what I like to do is I create roadmaps uh, with my outlines and with my drawings. So in other words, uh, well, let's dive in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to start with the uh, eyes of the drawing of the dog. And the reason I'm starting with the eyes is because it creates a landmark on the drawing that lets me know where I'm at. So I'm going to start out doing the, uh, the pupils. And on this dog... The pupils and the irises are not perfectly round. They're more, they're more like an almond or an egg shape. So what I'll do is I will take the extra soft charcoal pencil and get this as black as I can make it and carefully start outlining the reflections in the eye. Now one thing you'll notice in this drawing compared to the reference photo is that I'm actually making the reflections bigger than what they appear in the original uh, reference. And I'm doing that for a reason because if I make them bigger, uh, 
it's easier to go back later and reduce their size by using the, the black pencil than it is to try to erase jet black extra soft charcoal. Usually when extra soft charcoal gets on the paper, it's extremely hard to erase. And so I'm going to err on the side of caution, make the reflections bigger, and then go back later and reduce their size. Now notice that I also didn't go into how I did the outline and the reason is because it's that's its own video. Um, outlines are one of those things that takes a very very long time to master and so I will go back later and make another video on how to do those but it generally boils down to uh, trial and error, lots and lots and lots of practice. Um, but mainly my outline as you'll see in this drawing, um, I'm mainly outlining the most important parts of, of the dog. I'm outlining the eyes, pupils, irises, and outside of that I'm outlining the darkest parts of the fur, uh, the, you know, the, the jet black nose. I will outline some of the brightest white highlights, and that is just to create landmarks to let me know where I'm at in the drawing. Now if you're not an artist who does this all the time, um, that may not make a lot of sense. But when you're working on 18 inch by 24 inch paper and you find your head really close to the drawing, sometimes it's easy to get lost in small details. So if I'm working on a large section of fur, sometimes um, I might think I'm working in one specific area in relation to the reference photo when in actuality I'm working two inches to the right or two inches to the left because I've kind of lost my place because all the fur kind of looks the same, right? So what I do is I just outline those uh, really different areas of the fur, the eyes, and, and, and all that in order to make sure I'm staying in the right area. So as you can see here, I am starting to, to work on the black parts of the outside of her eyes because she has this kind of weird eyeliner look. Um, and so that's going to be one of the blackest parts of the entire drawing. And this is going to kind of set the tone for the way I do the rest of the drawing. It'll be this black part will be the part that I compare to other parts of the drawing and it will tell me how dark or how light to make those other parts. One of the things you'll notice me doing a lot here is rotating the pencil. If you watch my fingers, I will do a small section, then I'll kind of stop and rotate the pencil just not much, a sixteenth of an inch. And that is because as I, I scrub in this black area, I wear away parts of the pencil and this is one of the few areas of the drawing uh, where I need the sharpest part of the pencil to be lightly laying in that that black. So on this part I'm using a, uh, a hard pencil, a hard uh, charcoal pencil. And the problem I ran into is that that was so sharp um, that I couldn't really use it. I, I needed a flatter edge of the pencil. So I just take it over to my paper and scrub a little bit and wear that down in order to get a flatter, rounder tip on my pencil. The reason I do that is because I'm working in, in, in an area that needs to be smooth and needs to have no sharp lines. And that's true for most drawings that I do. I don't like to do sharp lines if I can avoid it. So I wear down that pencil a little bit, round it off, and then I can use that flatter part of the pencil just sort of lightly, lightly scrub in some of these uh, darker areas of the, the dog's eye. And that you, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of going around the outside of the iris and laying in a hard charcoal edge. And that's just um, kind of a really rough way to lay it in. And this is something that I'm going to reiterate over and over in this video. You want to lay in the general idea of what you're doing, then you go back and refine it. Uh, and, and we'll get in more into that here in just a bit. Uh, 
what I'm doing here is I'm taking a uh, stump or a smudge stick, uh, some people call it a blunt, and I'm taking out pencil marks by lightly scrubbing over what I've already drawn. This will take out any hard edges. It will take out the little pinhole uh, white holes that kind of poke through charcoal and it'll smooth everything out and make it look more photographic and less like a drawing. We're going to be using uh, stumps and q-tips a lot in this drawing. Now keep in mind, as you do this, you're going to be dirtying the end of the stump. Meaning, as you're scrubbing in and removing these pencil marks, you're adding charcoal to the blending stump. We're going to use that to our advantage, and we're going to take the charcoal that's, that's gone from the drawing to the stump and use that almost like its own pencil. And we're going to start reapplying charcoal back onto white paper and use the stump as a pencil to lay in darker areas. So as you can see here on the right hand side of this pupil going into the iris, there are dark splotches in the dog's eye. And we also want to darken up the outer edge of the iris. So instead of using a pencil to do that, I'm just going to use the dirty blending stump to accomplish the same thing without pencil marks. Now we're going to remove as much of the charcoal as we can by, I use a microfiber cloth, but you can use a paper towel or rag or whatever, because we're going to start blending in a lighter section of the dog's iris. And once we remove as much charcoal as we can, we still have a dirty blending stump, but it's not nearly as dark as what it was. So we can create two defined sections by controlling the amount of charcoal that's on the blending stump. Then I can just go back and when I want to darken up the outer side of the iris, I can scrub along something that's black on the drawing again, pick up a little bit more, then go right back to drawing the outside of the iris, drawing, uh, dropping in darker sections of the pupil on the iris. It's all about moving charcoal from one section to the other. At least for, for me it is. Now I'm going to go back and remove even more charcoal from the stump and get it as clean as I can. Now I can go back into the white of the eye and start filling that in a bit because the white of the eye is not actually white. It's actually a fairly dark gray. Um, we, can, we can do that with a blending stump and make sure it's smooth. Whereas if we used a pencil in this section, it wouldn't quite, it would be uh, sharp lines and grainy and, and we don't really want that. Now I'm going to take a Q-tip, dirty it up slightly, and now I can make a, a perfectly smooth blend along the whites of the eye. You have to be very careful here though because if you go into the black parts of the outline of the eye, you can pick up too much charcoal and smudge the entire thing. This actually takes a really delicate touch to do. Then I can use the same Q-tip to kind of soften the area around the, uh, the pupil and the iris. Because the iris is not a defined uh, 
part of the dog's eye. This this um, pupil go as it goes into the iris, it kind of fades. So we don't really want hard edges there. Now with the extra soft charcoal, I'm going to go in and very roughly and very lightly, I'm going to start adding in the black fur that's around the eye. We're not drawing hairs. At no point in a portrait or a you know, human or pet do, do I ever draw in single hairs. What I'm doing is adding very thin shadows that represent the shadows of clumps of hair. And one of the, the things to keep in mind while you're doing this is that if I were to hold up a, a human hair directly in front of you, let's say like from a foot away, you'd be able to see it. If I step back five or ten feet, that hair disappears because it's too thin for your eyes to comprehend. That's why we don't draw a hair in a, a drawing. We draw shadows of clumps of hair. Um, if you ever look at somebody who's done a, like a drawing of a dog where it looks too sharp and it looks kind of amateurish, it's almost always because somebody has tried to draw each individual hair and it just it becomes a mess. So what I'm doing here is I'm scrubbing in fatter lines in extra soft charcoal. I'm doing it lightly. And then I'm going to come back into that just a little bit later, and I'm going to blend that even further to make those sharp lines disappear. Now, when I looked closely at the black parts of the dog's eye on the reference photo, there were two sections that you're, you're seeing kind of come together now that were a lighter colored black than the blackest parts of that eye. It was almost black, but not quite. And it's just basically a light highlight that's, that goes on the bottom part of the eye. I'm purposely laying this out to where the black is in place, the darkest parts of the black are in place, and then I'm leaving those two highlights pure white for right now. Then I can come back and lay those highlights in and steadily get those darker and darker until I'm happy with them. I don't try to do it right off the bat because then I'll lose my place um, and I, I won't know where those highlights are supposed to be exactly. So I'm using negative space right now to create a landmark. And then I'll come back to that landmark later and finish it up. But right now, as I look at this eye and I see those two bright white sections underneath there, that definitely lets me know exactly where I am in the fur part of this drawing. So we'll go back in and quickly kind of blend all this together. You'll notice that I draw and blend with the grain of the fur. So in other words, the fur in this section I'm working on kind of drops down and swoops to the right. Then as I get up to the, the top and the left-hand sections of the eye, the fur kind of goes up and to the right. It swoops. Um, so I'm making sure that I'm not drawing lines in that direction, but I'm blending shadows in that direction because it will create the illusion of fur. As long as you keep going in the, the direction of the grain of the fur, it will trick people into thinking that you've drawn individual hairs in fur when you actually haven't. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm going over that bright white highlight with a blending stump because that adds uh, not a black but a dark gray to it, but doesn't completely cover it up. At one point, I'll go back in and darken that even further, but right now, that's the thing that I'm going to mention uh, over and over. Drop in your basics um, and then refine it later. Right now, we're just dropping in a basic. <laughs> 
So this is one of my favorite parts of doing uh, fur on an animal. I go back into where I have dark black extra soft charcoal and that stuff is really movable. Uh, if you accidentally touch it, you will get charcoal all over your hands and fingers. Uh, you'll smudge it on the paper. But what I do is I use that, uh, that printer paper to rest my hand on. Then I take a blending stump and I draw directly from the blackest part of that charcoal and pull it outwards. And that pulling moves the charcoal around and creates the illusion of fur and it creates the illusion of direction, um, the way the fur kind of flows over the face. But all we're doing is grabbing that soft charcoal with a blending stump and pulling it out. Now it may look like I'm scrubbing here, but I'm not. I'm using single strokes and I'm, I'm pulling the strokes from the top to the bottom. Uh, if I scrubbed that in, the lines would be all the same thickness, but what I actually want them to do, I want them thicker the closer they are to the black section of the eyes. So whenever I do the top part of the eye, I do the same thing. I grab the soft charcoal with the blending stump and I pull up in a single swipe. It'll be thicker at the, the base of that black part and thinner as it goes away from the eye so it looks like uh, the shadows that fur really creates. Now is when I go back and I start refining just a little bit. I'm going to darken up the edges of the iris and remember this iris is not perfectly round and I don't want to let my brain take over and say, no, 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 that has to be round. If, my, if I let my brain take over and force myself to make a perfectly round eye here, it's not going to look like the dog I'm drawing. I need to keep that part as close to the photograph as possible. Then I can take my blending stump and start uh, blending in the outside of the iris. I can start softening uh, the outside of the pupil. I can start using the blending trick again with the stumps where I can use it to darken up the iris. And then in parts of the iris that need to be a little bit sharper, which is usually uh, reflections of shadows, then I can go back with either an extra soft or a hard charcoal pencil and start adding those fine details in with those, with the point of the pencil. And we can take out the pencil marks again with the blending stump and just kind of repeat the process until I'm happy with this first level of refinement. Now I'll take a Q-tip, make sure it's fairly clean, and I'm going to use that to kind of soften up the entire thing. We want to get rid of any hard lines that go through this eye because very rarely do you see a hard line in nature and you'll almost never have a hard line uh, when it comes to portraits of living creatures, humans, pets, doesn't matter. 
Now I can go back in with a Tombow eraser and start making the eyes look glassier and shinier by very gently lifting out uh, parts of the gray and black. Uh, I'm creating just little light spots within the eye and that's what makes it look, it's what makes it pop out as 3D and shiny is adding those tiny little reflections. Now everything that I'm doing here looks really tedious. I'm aware of that. It's it's all about refinement at this point. We're still not at the the upper layers of refinement. We're still not getting super detailed, but we're starting to use that refinement to correct the shape of the outer edge of the eye. So notice I'm kind of erasing along the bottom edge of the eye. That's to correct the shape. And then I will take a blending stump and use that to move around shadows. Because the upper edge of the eye does isn't one small uh, continuous curve. There's a curve along the top. It kind of dips inward on the upper left-hand corner. Then it has a different dip as you go to the, the absolute corner of the eye. So it's kind of a weird wiggly shape. And I'm trying to refine that with my eraser and the, the blending stick. Then I can go back in with the extra soft charcoal and make sure that the blackest part of the blacks are as dark as I can get them. One big thing here, do not use uh, hard pressure whenever you're blackening up an area. You want to just add it in layers because you'll destroy the teeth of the paper if you push too hard and then you won't be able to manipulate the charcoal. So you're just adding little layers at a time. Use soft or medium pressure. Never ever push hard with a pencil whenever you're drawing. I don't care if it's graphite or charcoal or colored pencils, don't use hard pressure. Now that I'm happy with the outline of the eye and I'm fairly happy with the shadows uh, that are inside it, I can go back in and start pulling out that fur a little bit more. It's more refinement. I want to start going out from the eye. Now, you'd be tempted here, and I'm always tempted here, to start drawing the next eye as soon as the right eye is done. But I like to go out further than that so that I have a really nice uh, road map to work from. Um, it, I need to get the curvature of the dog's head just right so that I know the eyes work. So you'll see over here to the right, I'm scrubbing in extra soft charcoal on the scrap piece of paper. Then I'm scrubbing that with a Q-tip. Then to the right of that, I'm kind of taking charcoal off of the Q-tip. I, I want there to be a specific amount on here because if you don't take the charcoal off of the Q-tip, um, you'll have big, thick black lines on there, and that's not what we're wanting. We want to have kind of a mid-tone gray, so I dirty it up, scrub it down in order to get a little bit of charcoal off. Now I can go back into the drawing and very, very lightly start laying in these light and mid-tone grays. This is just me blocking in uh, one big dark shadow across the uh, forehead of the dog, so that I can get the curvature of her head just right. Because if I don't have that down right now and I start drawing that other eye, what's gonna happen is if the curvature of the head isn't right, both eyes will look off and it will completely change the way she looks. So the part that I'm working on now is basically the darker colored fur that isn't black. So I'm using the Q-tip to kind of scrub it, that in and just lay in one big block. I'm using the 
darkest part of the charcoal and the Q-tip by slightly rotating the Q-tip around. In other words, I'm finding the dirtiest spot on it. And you can see how that translates to adding little dark splotches on the fur under the eye. That's kind of the darkest uh, shadows of the fur itself. The, those little splotches will come out. You'll be tempted to try to fix those on the spot. I implore you, don't do that. Just let the paper take off what it wants, then you can refine it later. All we're doing is laying in a darker mid-tone uh, gray here in order for us to be able to mentally process that this is the dark brown part of the fur. I'm also going to use the same method as I did with the blending stump. I'm going to grab the charcoal that's already on the paper and I'm going to pull it out in the direction of the fur with the grain away from the eye. Don't worry if that destroys some of your hard lines in the fur that you've created with the blending stumps. Um, you actually want to soften those up. You don't want those hard lines in there. It'll make it look really unnatural. So we're going to purposely pull right over the top of those and it does two things. It allows us to blend that out into the, uh, the mid-tone color of the fur, the brown part of the fur, and it also allows us to soften up those hard pencil marks that we made before. Now as you scrub the, the, this darker fur in, you will slowly lose charcoal from the Q-tip. When you reload that Q-tip with charcoal, you need to make sure that you scrub some of it off. Unless you're working in a really, really dark area, you want to have uh, the right amount of charcoal on the Q-tip and that just comes with practice. So you'll notice every once in a while I reach over to the paper, I get a little bit more um, charcoal on the q-tip and I'll either purposely get a very small amount or I'll load it up too much and then you'll see me scrub blank paper beside that big splotch and that that just comes from I, I've done enough of these to know how much charcoal is on that q-tip from feel this is the one thing that I implore you to practice a lot if you're going to use this method is maybe even get just a blank piece of paper uh, and also make sure you throw a pencil across your drawing occasionally. It lets the pencil know that you're in control. But what I've got here is I've got extra soft and I'm just kind of darkening up uh, more section, more of that outside black sections of the, the eye because as you pull with a blending stump or a Q-tip, you are going to be lightening up that area because you're moving charcoal from the area to another area. So you may have to go back in like I've done and darken it up a little bit more later. Now with a blending stump, I can load that up with dark charcoal, like a lot of charcoal, and then very, very lightly, I can start dropping in individual shadows. It looks like I'm drawing single hairs, but I'm not. Again, I'm just drawing thin shadows that are made by clumps of hairs and I don't want those to be a sharp pencil point look to them, which is why I'm using a blending stump. I just want uh, little thin layers of shadow that go with the grain, and that kind of tricks the person who's looking at the drawing into thinking that there are individual hairs and a sort of flow to those 
Now I can go back in and start refining the shape of that black around the eye. So in this case, the corner of it, there was a big sort of a circular blob that I had not gotten correct. But now that I've got all this extra hair laid in, I can just kind of scrub that in and then refine it with a blending stump. Then I can go back with my Tombow eraser, make sure it's clean, and I can start dropping in highlights. And again, I'm using the same technique where I go from inside the eye to the outside and I'm just dropping in hair highlights. So part of this is uh, light highlights. The other part is the dog has a few stray white hairs that bleed into the, the darker fur. I'm just dropping those in uh, very roughly. And notice how on the bottom parts of the eyes when I do that it makes it look like the black part of her eye outline. Um, it makes it look like the darker colored fur ends there. It has a kind of a sharp hair look to it. Now we're eventually going to go back over this and we're going to darken this whole thing up with a Q-tip and you're going to lose some of these eraser marks but not in a way that you think. Well, we'll go over that more in a little, a little bit later. So I, I'm going to go back to the blending stump, load it up with charcoal, take off any extra so we don't have you know thick dust on it, and again start laying in very light uh, line type shadows in a swooping motion so that it looks like swooping fur. Again, block it in, refine it later. What we're doing now is we're doing a f the first level of refinement to kind of make it look kind of as real as we can without going overboard on details. We want the, um, it, it's hard to explain because if I say we want basic refinement, that's kind of a contradiction in terms, but that's kind of what we're doing here. We're putting in one level of refinement, getting it, uh, at least basically done then we're going to move on to another section then as we get more and more of the drawing done we can come back and refine it even further You notice how I'm kind of swiping away the extra uh, little eraser balls that pop off of there? Don't do that. Um, I'm practiced at it, so whenever I swipe it with my hand like that, I can swipe in like a quarter of an inch section of the drawing without damaging it. Uh, most people will swipe across it and you'll smudge the whole drawing and ruin it. <laughs> so that's a do as I say, not as I do sort of deal. Try to blow that off. Now we're going to go back in this time and we're going to get a lot of charcoal on this Q-tip and we're going to start adding in the darkest splotches on her fur. These are not hairs that we're drawing, these are just dark splotches and those are going to give us another uh, landmark for us to kind of gauge where we are in the drawing because this is a very broad section of fur that we're working with. It's a big brown amoeba type of blob that rests over her entire eye stretching into her forehead. If we color this all just gray, like a flat gray, then one, her head is going to look flat, and two, we're going to kind of lose where we are in this big mass of gray fur here. So those very dark sections um, that show up in the reference photo, we want to get those mimicked in this. And that'll tell us, you know, down to the inch where we are in this drawing. So as I, after I get those blocked in, now I'm just going to concentrate on creating a gradient with the Q-tip, starting at the darkest sections of the darkest part of, of this section of her fur. And then I'm going to scrub down to the lightest section because naturally as you scrub with this Q-tip, uh, more and more charcoal is going to disappear from the Q-tip. <laughs> 
and you're going to get a naturally lighter area. So we're creating gradients in that way. Then once we reload the Q-tip, we're going to again start at some of the darkest parts of the fur because the Q-tip is going to be dirtier and therefore have more charcoal come off on the paper. If we tried to do that in the lightest section and work to dark, then we're going to accidentally get too much charcoal on the paper. Then we're going to have to start taking a kneaded eraser to tone it down much easier to start with the darkest areas and work toward the light when you're using this method. Now keep in mind when you're doing this it's going to look dirty and splotchy and messy. Let it look that way because fur is dirty and splotchy and messy. We can refine that and blend that down to, uh, to something we're much happier with later. All we're doing is what I, I keep mentioning over and over. Drop in the basics, refine it later. This is only a basic blob that we're adding here. This section of the ear that I'm working on is, is a little darker than the rest of um, this area and that will make her head look like it curves you know, the way it's supposed to curve. And even when I'm laying in these blocks of color, I'm still following the grain of the fur. That's not going to be quite as noticeable to people because it's just a background color. But if you follow the grain, there are naturally going to be parts of this block. They're going to be darker than others. And that will, in itself, create kind of a fur texture. And in fact, once you get this blocked in, if you're happy with the way this looks without adding in highlights and dark hair uh, shadows, you could leave this as is and it will look like very soft fur. So let's reload the paper with uh, extra soft charcoal because as I use this over and over, the charcoal on the scrap paper will also deplete. We'll reload that Q-tip and very, very, very lightly start adding in more hair um, blotches or splotches. And notice how there are certain lines that kind of stick out as way darker than the rest. We're doing that on purpose because, again, that looks like fat shadows from clumps of hair. Then as the charcoal releases from the Q-tip and we start to get a cleaner Q-tip, then we can start scrubbing and that will blend all of this together and take out that sort of dirty, splotchy look. So you'll see me going through most of this uh, new area and scrubbing kind of a little bit hard. You don't want to scrub so hard it destroys the teeth of the paper, but you're kind of scrubbing hard here in order to take the pencil that's already on the paper and blend it into each other to remove sort of that dirty splotchy look. We're going to do that to this entire section by the way. 
Now we're starting to get to the edge of where the brown fur ends and it goes into white fur. When we wrap up this section, we're going to actually leave most of this white fur as negative space for the time being. I, I will draw or drop in a sort of a very, very light gray um, at one point. But for the most part, we're going to leave that alone because if we make that too dark right now, it will ruin the effect of the fur. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get a lot of the dog's face drawn and in place. That way, by comparison, we'll know how dark to make the white part of the fur. I know that sounds weird saying how dark to make the white part of the fur, but remember, we're not dealing with pure whites here. It only looks white because your brain has been tricked into thinking it's white. In reality, a lot of the white that we're going to be working with through here is actually a, a, a mid-tone gray. It only looks white by comparison with the other dark parts of the, the fur. And now it's time to start blending all this in so that it's a little bit smoother. Because what we'll do is we'll come back in here and uh, with the Tombow eraser and with the, uh, the blending stump, we can start adding finer details later. We can add in, you know, hair shadows. We can add in highlights. We can add in those little white hairs that kind of sneak their way through her fur. But before those can become effective, we have to have that background dropped in first so that there's a, a contrast or a base for those to stick out on. Now we'll grab the Tombow eraser. I'm making sure that it's clean here and the other thing I'm doing as I'm pulling on that is making sure that I have enough of an eraser in there to do what I'm about to do because the, these things you can refill and I'm down to like the last half inch of an eraser in this particular one. It operates like a mechanical pencil. So once I, I've got that clean and I'm sure I've got enough of an eraser to do this, I'll go back in and start adding in these little white highlights that will appear as both white hairs and as hairs that are reflecting sunlight. The most important part in this section of the drawing is when I'm adding these in, I'll start erasing from negative space into the, uh, the gray blob and that will make these sharp little lines that make it appear like white hairs are coming out of the dark uh, splotches and into the highlighted area of her head. You're creating points without having to draw points. You're erasing the points in. Much, much easier than trying to do this with a pencil and drawing a round negative space. I'm not pushing hard on this and every stroke that you see me make is one stroke. It looks like, you know, from above I'm erasing the way you'd erase, you know, when you're a little kid and you're erasing, you know, handwriting or pencil marks and you just kind of scrub it away. That's not what I'm doing. I'm actually just quickly making single strokes at a time and then moving on to another section. If you work this too much, um, it'll look splotchy and you don't want that. Another thing to keep in mind is this is not a final product. We're going to go back in with a Q-tip at one point and darken this entire area up. And you're going to think that by doing that, 
we're getting rid of all these eraser marks and these little white furs, uh, we're, we're not actually going to do that. The charcoal will be taken off of the Q-tip and onto the dark area of the drawing at a different rate than it is uh, taken off in the erased sections, if that makes sense. In other words, as we'll, we're darkening this up with a Q-tip, you'll still be able to see those eraser marks. They'll just be slightly darker than what they were, and we want that because we don't just have one layer of highlights. We have multiples. There are some highlights that are mid-tones, some that are soft, and some that are really bright white. We want multiple uh, layers of brightness whenever we're doing these highlights. So as we're scrubbing this in and making it darker, we're purposely going over these eraser marks that we just made. You'll notice they're still there. They're just a little darker than what they were. And now we're going into what I'd consider to be kind of a level one refinement um, with this overall section above her eye. This, the same way that we did around the edge of the eye, uh, this is kind of level one refinement with this splotch. Now remember when you're blocking this in and even when you're doing the refinement, sometimes you'll be tempted to think, well, this section is all one, like the brown blob of the fur. So I need to make it all one big blob of gray when I'm doing it in black and white charcoal. But the truth is it's more of a gradient. So you're going to have certain sections of this that are darker than others. And on this particular reference photo, the top part of this blob and both the left and right um, sections of this blob are darker than the very middle and that's what makes her head look round. The apex of the curve of her head is always going to be lighter than the outside edges of it. So we're purposely making that dark and then fading into a lighter gray. Then we can go back in with our blending stump again and add yet another layer of darker hair clump shadows. When I load that stump up with more charcoal, you'll notice I spin the stump and I drag it along that little uh, clumpy soft charcoal blob that I made on the, the paper. That way I've got charcoal all the way around that blending stump. And as I take charcoal off of it, I can still kind of spin it as I'm drawing in those hair shadows and that way I don't have to keep going back and forth from the blob to the drawing, blob to the drawing. I can just kind of spin that very, very slowly and have a steady flow of charcoal going onto my paper. It's hardly noticeable as I'm doing it, but I'm just spinning it very, very slowly as I lay in those hair shadows. and you're doing this very delicately. If you scrub these in there and you put too much pressure, it's going to lay in too fat of a line and too dark of a line and you don't want that. You want these to be very, very subtle. <laughs> 
Now, once again, with the Tombow eraser, we can go in and add even more brighter uh, white highlights. So now we've got two layers of those highlights. One is more, sort of a mid-tone, and this one's going to be much brighter. And you'll, you'll notice these a lot more, even on video, which doesn't pick up all the subtleties of the drawing. Uh, these will stick out like a sore thumb. Don't go crazy with these either. If we go, if we add too many of these in, it's going to look unnatural and it's going to remove too much of that dark background and it won't look like fur. It'll just look like haphazard eraser marks. So we want to be kind of stingy with these. Now we're going to take the Q-tip. We're not going to add charcoal to this. We're going to take as much off as we can. And very, very lightly, we're going to kind of scrub in a very light gray that fades into a brighter white as we go up the head. This is the white part of the fur. And remember that the whitest part of the entire drawing is just the edges of her head, the edges of her ears, and that's going to be blank paper. That'll be negative space. But for that to look like it's really bright white. We have to make this part a soft gray. Otherwise, there, the whole thing will look uh, too white and it'll look unnatural. So the brightest parts of the drawing will look brighter only by comparing it to this soft gray that we're adding in now. But the, the human brain will still register this as white fur even though we're not leaving it totally white. And now that I've got the curvature of the head started, that gives me a point of reference so that I know I'm doing this left eye correctly. If I just did both eyes without the fur around it, I'm taking a lot of guesswork and I could be wrong and it'll make the whole drawing look weird. But by adding in that curvature, I know where the eye is supposed to go, I know where, how it's supposed to look, and I have a point of comparison to make sure that it's correct. Now since a lot of this eye is way darker than the other, I can do both the pupil and the black outline of the eye at the same time because they're virtually the same color. I say color, I'm aware that we're not working in color, but when I say color I mean, you know, tone. You're going to find in most portraits that you do, animals, humans, it doesn't matter, one eye is almost always going to be way darker than the other. And the reason is because the person who took the reference photo, in a good reference photo, knew how to use lighting to their advantage. So usually there's going to be light hitting one side of the face, as well as a backlit sort of light to make the top of the hair glow. That means that one eye is going to have more shadows on it than the other. So when you get to things like the whites of the eye, one part, one eye may be uh, almost pure white, the other one may be extremely dark gray, almost black. Um, but the, the brain, again, registers as, as white because there's a point of comparison. 
Now I'm using the extra soft charcoal here to kind of make an outline of the eye, but I'm not going to keep that as one solid, very sharp line. I'm going to actually make a big, thick uh, outline the same way we did with the first eye. And then I'm going to go over it again with a blending stump to take out any sharp edges because sharp edges in a portrait look very unnatural and you don't want those for the most part. Then as I add more black to the outside of the eye, you're, you're kind of tempted to fill this in in the direction of that outline and because it's more comfortable. But what we're actually doing is starting on the outline and uh, sort of scrubbing in lines outward. And it's for the same reason we did the first one because we want it to look like fur that starts at the eye and then flows outward into her face. And the only way that we can achieve that is by following the grain of the fur. It feels unnatural because it's very easy to overlap your pencil strokes with that outline that you made on the outside of her eye. It just takes a delicate touch to pull it off. Now we're in a fortunate spot on the bottom right part of that eye because the shadows are so dark you can't see the direction of the fur. So I can just scrub that in using small circles. But as we go toward the left part of that eye, that's when the fur is more defined and you want to definitely make sure that you're going with the grain. Don't worry about these small little pinholes either. You can notice in this I've got a lot of pinholes um, poking out through that black so you can see tiny little spots of white. We're going to take care of those with a blending stump. So you don't have to be totally, totally black here. In fact, most times you don't ever want to go totally black because that's just not something you see in nature very often. There's always some highlights there. Now we'll take the blending stump and we'll start removing pencil marks and lightly scrubbing these areas so that everything's nice and smooth. Then use that same blending stump to kind of pull the pupil out because in this specific breed of dog there's no hard defined lines on the pupil. It kind of fades into the iris, at least from a distance. So where I'm just kind of using the dirty stump in order to, to color that out a little bit and make it look a little more faded. Now the edge of her face is very close to that left eye, left to us, right to her. So I'm using a dirty stump in order to, to kind of scrub in a basic outline of that. That part of the fur is way darker than the rest of it and it's embedded in shadow. I'm not worried about those shadows just yet. All I'm doing is a very, very rough scrub in order to remind myself this is where her face ends. It's another landmark that I can refer to whenever I'm 
kind of get lost in the drawing. Then going back up into the very black sections of her eye, I can grab that charcoal and pull it down with the blending stump in order to create the illusion of small individual hairs that come out of that section. Block it in, refine it later. This is a very, very, very basic um, refining that I'm doing here. Now once I get up to the nose, this is a weird section where the nose ends, it curves into her uh, eye, our, our left, her right, and the hairs kind of cross over each other. So you have two different directions of fur. One uh, clump of fur that comes from the nose, the other part of the fur that comes from the eyes. That's very tricky to pull off. So I try to scrub it in very roughly and then again refine it later but that's to remind myself that we're not dealing with one direction of fur here, we're dealing with two. Just in that tiny, tiny little section. Once I've got that you know, blocked out on, on the paper, then I can go back up into the eye and continue pulling uh, around the eye to go from black to that sort of uh, brownish fur. I'm going to clean off the blending stump. That way I can go back up into the eye with a, a clean stump and I can control a little better the way her iris looks. If I don't clean that off, I'll start off with something that could be too powerful, too much charcoal, and if I get it too dark, that's, that's kind of hard to fix. It's way easier to add charcoal than to remove charcoal. Do the same thing with a Q-tip. I clean it off using the scrap paper, then I can start pulling around the charcoal to darken up that, that iris and to do the same thing with the whites of the eye. Remember this eye is also embedded in shadows so the white of her eye here is going to be a little darker than the white of her, her other eye. And it's going to be the same thing with the iris. Here in a bit I'll actually have to darken up that iris in order to make it look like it's embedded in a, a darker shadow. Now the same method with this eye. Take the Q-tip go into the blackest parts and pull outward, then we can take that dirty Q-tip and use that to outline the edge of her face where her kind of cheek goes into her, I guess you'd call it a muzzle. Now we can go back into the iris and do a little bit more refinement. We can put that thin outer layer that's darker than the rest of her iris just with a, uh, a blending stump. We can pull off a little bit of uh, dark black from her pupil and use that to reload the, uh, the stump and that way we can start laying in small hairs above her eye. 
then soften that whole thing up with a Q-tip very, very, very gently. Then before I jump to the next section, I'm just going to very roughly scratch in one of the uh, the dark blobs of fur that goes on her nose because that'll give me a sense of direction uh, to make sure everything is angled the, the right way. So this is just a very, very quick landmark that I'm throwing in before moving on to the next section. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this first part of the, uh, the very first tutorial series. And uh, I will be coming back and I'm doing all these in real time. So um, I will have the next video up in the next day or two. Um, we will be go going through every hour of this drawing until it's completely done. I do have a free, totally free art guild. Um, it's called Midwest Guild of Fine Art. I am leaving a link to that in the description. Uh, there's no catch. I don't sell information. I don't charge you money. I don't do anything like that. It's just a, a place for artists to hang out and talk. We have a Discord. Um, we do art shares. Uh, as the guild grows, we'll be doing you know more and more actual activities. Um, it's a way for you to promote your own art, especially as the guild grows. The more members we have, the more promotion, you know, the more people you'll reach. Uh, so I'll put links to that in the description. Uh, joining is pretty simple. I do have a Patreon up, but that's totally voluntary, obviously. Nobody is required to donate anything to Patreon. The more money we get in there, the more money I can devote to the guild itself, but um, there's basically no overhead besides server costs. So um, don't feel like you have to donate to a Patreon, but if you'd like to, I will also put the link to that in the description. And we'll see you guys in the next video.